using a simulation to control a robotic body, scaling great heights to overcome fears in tests of courage in a majestic environment in order to obtain valuable metallic resources. Whoa, careful little guys. Learning to be one with the environment and defending it from those who threaten it. Welcome to my VRcade. This is Ender, and today I am playing Avatar, I mean Stormland. If you disagree with my comparison, I would love to know why. Please go ahead and explain in the comments why you disagree. This game was recommended to me by fellow Catwalker Carissia on the CatVR Discord as one of the most immersive and best experiences for the Catwalk. I also found it simply to be a great experience overall. This game might only be known to those who've been playing VR for quite a while, as it is an Oculus PC exclusive, and that format has been dying out. However, in terms of environment and story length, it beats most newer standalone or quest store games. Just be sure to raise the super sampling or resolution in your Oculus PC app, as I found the standard 1x resolution pretty hard to play with. I set it at a little over one and a half, and it worked quite well with the Wi-Fi 6 router and a 3080 graphics card. Your experience may vary. Also, I learned, as this is the first Oculus Store PC game I tried using with my catwalk is for Oculus games, you do have to use AirLink with your PC to work with the catwalk. This was new for me as I've only used virtual desktop successfully and quite happily in the past otherwise. That concludes my introduction to this game. Now I'll discuss what I think makes this game stand out. Stormland is so aptly named because anything that isn't land is a storm cloud, at least in this first section of the game I've been playing. Anytime you step out onto it, you will automatically float or skim the clouds with your boosters automatically engaging, and you can have a lot of fun with it. You'll boost by hitting the grips, at least on the Oculus controllers, but your boost will eventually run out, and that's where these cool buoys come into play. Whenever you hit their surrounding blue area, you maintain your boost gauge, so to speak. Not that you can actually see the gauge, avoid those little purple things and other hazards, and don't actually run into them, as doing so will affect your health. Actually jumping up in the air or off a ledge is more actually flying. You just have your rocket boosters engage and aim up or down with your arms to adjust altitude. And unless you it's jump the off tempest. the edge of a map, you won't die. Climbing is a lot of fun. You can pull yourself up with one hand and just kind of fling yourself up along the way. Or there's a grappling type effect that I'll show you in this next clip. Here you can see with these orange arrows that even if you aren't actually grabbing the wall, it'll more or less Spider-Man-like, webbing-like, pull you along. Thus far, the main material you're gonna be gathering is called alloy, and you'll see it in these crystalline structures that you'll want to break apart and accumulate for use at the benches and mod stations. Workbenches allow you to do most of the weapon and item upgrades that you'd be looking to do, as well as restore health. And later on in the game, really at the end of the first major mission, you'll have the option to look into more substantial upgrades for your character. I don't wanna spoil it any more than that. After the tutorials, finding your mission objectives is not too tricky. If you follow the compass and you've crafted your materials appropriately, I highly recommend completing the cartographer mission as soon as possible so you get access to the world map and finding your way around is a lot easier. While the characters in this story are not of a biological nature, they are as sympathetic as any of their 
organic analogs. Their eyes remind me of the animatronic Johnny Five, and the voices and gestures are similar to those you see in the Transformer movies. I won't add much beyond this, as again, I hate to provide spoilers, and I'm pretty early on in the game so far. Here's a quick clip of my first attempt at sniping an enemy from afar. I was surprised by how quickly the enemy drew a beat on me and my health suffered appropriately. Here I am just minding my own business, doing a little resource gathering when all of a sudden some enemies spawn in. So rather than run, I decide to try to fight them. And uh, by the way, you just crush those fruits for health restore. And if that doesn't make sense to you now, it will later. A lot of the environment really reminds me of Mass Effect. I guess it's the play style, the combination of the sci-fi buildings and alien environments, and the duck and cover gameplay.
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And if you're interested in playing Stormland, please reach out to me on Discord if you'd like to play some time because this is a cooperative game and there's probably not a lot of players around. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.